Uh, I'm Maddie. I'm the current Yorksport Union president, and I'm here to say with Laura. Laura, do you want to introduce yourself? Who are you? Who did you used to be? <laughs> I used to be Maddie. So I was the Yorksport president uh, from 2017 to 18, uh, part of uh, that year's cohort. Um, I, uh, since leaving USU, joined the civil service. So I joined their fast stream graduate scheme, and I am now returned to the world of sport and politics because I'm in the government team that's organising the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in 2022. That is a job that I'm very jealous of. Um, <laughs> very jealous indeed. So you were UC Sports President um, back, back in 2017, my second year. Um, I just wondered what sort of made you decide to run for the role and um, how did you find sort of the nomination and election process as a whole? Casting my mind back now. Um, so I suppose beginning at the beginning, um, sport at York was a huge part of my university career. I'm sure sort of that's what everyone who's involved in York <laughs> sport says, but genuinely I sort of uh, found settling into uni quite tough and actually the sports the or rather the people that I met through sport and those sort of kind of community environments that sport provide were a big part of the reason why I stayed essentially they sort of made me want to come back to York uh, particularly after Christmas um, and I sort of threw myself into the sort of sporting experience at York I was part of lacrosse so that was a big sort of part of my time. I probably did uh, more lacrosse than I should have done and maybe spent more time on my degree, but that is a, <laughs> a separate story. So I suppose um, I spent a lot of my time doing it, obviously because I cared a huge amount about both playing and the people that I was with. And I sort of really, uh, I personally felt the impacts, but also I suppose sort of for the people I was with, they could see that sport at York meant more than just playing on the pitch. It was very much about the sort of support networks and the sort of benefits that sport could provide in terms of mental health and pe keeping kind of people sort of close knit. Um, so I suppose having spent a lot of my time at York, I sort of learned what the benefits were um, and also knew where some of the pitfalls were as well. And I had my sort of own ideas about um, ways that I could improve things uh, sort of always remember speaking to people and they would say oh that's just the way it is you know it's that's the system or that's the way it's done and I would kind of go yeah but don't you want something more or don't you think it could be different um or how about this maybe we could work together to you know fix it um so I think I had all of these sort of ideas and then um I think I saw sports presidency as the ultimate opportunity to make some of those changes happen um so it was a sort of an evolutionary thing, I suppose, but I sort of, I think it felt like a natural step to take all of that sort of knowledge and experience that I gained through participating in sport and the sort of, you know, passion I felt for trying to encourage as many people to experience all the benefits as possible and make sure it was as wide reaching that sort of sports spreads felt like kind of a natural step. Um, so that's the why, I guess. I'm sure, Maddie, your sort of <laughs> reasons were running for quite similar. And I, I don't know about whether the election sort of campaign process has changed at all, but I sort of, um, it's such a blur in terms of the, the actual process of election week. Um, that was fairly early on in the sort of stages of, of having online campaigning as well as in-person campaigning. So cardboard was very much a big feature of any campaign at that point in time. So there were, my friends who uh, bless their souls are still friends with me despite this experience of <laughs> painting vast amounts of, we went for bright purple uh, cardboard. So there were many happy evenings where I sort of gently plied my housemates, friends, anyone who would be willing to kind of sit <laughs> and uh, paint cardboard with tea biscuits and, and sort of, you know, kind of, there was a real kind of collective sense of actually, you know, although you're the candidate, your campaign team is really important. Definitely. Um, so, the campaign yeah. team is almost as important as as you in a sense I remember scrubbing white paint out of my carpet when I was moving out at the end of the <laughs> third year yeah. Yeah. I actually still have some uh clothes 
some of my old sports York merch that has bits of purple paint on it from where I'd painted signs and then gone out and sort of spoken to sports clubs or, or whatever during during campaign week. So um, no fond memories of that. But the campaign team is is one of the things that stands out for me from sort of just memories of that, you know, election process, because they they sort of become you and your cause. Um, you know, I had sort of one person telling me where I needed to go and another person sort of <laughs> being me on social media <laughs> and saying, you know, Laura's going to be in this place at, at X time. But I think I think the sort of nominations process overall is a bit of a test run for the job that you're about to do because it's all about persuading people that you are the right person for the job and kind of carrying messages and sort of bringing people with you. Um, and that's all of the kind of things that you end up doing as an officer. You know, it's all about sort of persuading people to your point of view and not just getting them to agree with you, but then getting them to do something because they agree with you. So in the election, it's a case of I've persuaded you that I'm the right candidate. So please make sure you go out of your way to vote for me. But also, you know, in the role, you'll have all these brilliant ideas about how you can change sport at York for the better. So not only do you need to persuade the right people that those are what you collectively should be doing together, but then they need to do their bit and you need to kind of help them bring you on that journey. So you reach the eventual sort of destination together. And those are all the sort of kind of skills that you're trying out and sort of testing in sort of nominations and elections periods. So I think it's quite a good process from that point of view. It's sort of a bit of a, a dry run, if you like, for <laughs> the main event. <laughs> The next year of your life. Uh, no, I agree. Yeah, I think, exactly. <laughs> I think bringing people with you is definitely something that I've learned throughout. I'm lucky enough to have had two years now. And I think if you don't bring people with you, then you've lost before you've even started. Because you've got, as you said, people have got to believe in it because you can't do it all on your own. You know, you yeah. can't do 18,000 people's jobs for them. Um, <laughs> much as you might try <laughs> yes um so could you try and describe a bit about what your year as sports president was like so could you tell me a bit about like what you enjoyed most about the role some of your biggest achievements in your opinion yeah I mean you'll know this Maddie it's sort of hard almost to articulate exactly what the the sort of experience is of, of being a sabbatical officer um I think I sort of tend to think of the year in sort of chunks. So what people might not realise sort of about sabbatical officers, you actually begin in June. So you sort of do a huge process of training and preparation and sort of doing as much groundwork as possible for all the commitments that you said you'd make uh, during the election in that sort of summer period. So you're, you're here um, and kind of in, like in York, trying to prepping, um, and there's a sort of ephemeral sort of talk of, you know, when students are back on campus and that's when sort of part two kicks in, if you like, in sort of, you know, autumn, particularly for the sports press, I think, where you've got clubs coming back for pre-season, it all starts to feel kind of real. And certainly for me, I think I'm a big people person anyway, but the sort of a lot of the motivation for the role is sort of helping people and actually kind of, you know, making the most of their university experiences through sport in this case, but for any officer role. And actually kind of seeing them come back onto campus with the excitement is is kind of, that for me was when the sort of sports presidency kind of really kicked off. Um, and then obviously you're there sort of through term time and sometimes through the sort of uni holidays as well. So it is a sort of a job in that experience, in that way, which I think I hadn't necessarily anticipated I think you tend to think in the sort of 10 week York terms but actually the sort of sports presidency is kind of more of a constant figure I suppose in in my year a few of the the highlights I don't want to rub salt in any wounds given that I know that Roses was cancelled last year but um you'll be pleased to hear that I wasn't the sports pres for a, a home roses I was just a, a mere away roses which is obviously a slightly different kettle of fish but nonetheless we had just the most amazing time even though we were the sort of we didn't get all of the kind of excitement that comes with hosting roses is such a phenomenon in itself um we did a big campaign that year about sort of 
being the opposition and but and sort of carrying that united team spirit to Lancaster and even though we were on sort of not in York we were still very much a unified sort of York team and we would collectively support each other so we did a lot about you know making sure you went and supported all the different sort of teams if you were there on a Saturday you could go and support all of the other York squads playing at different times it was a really nice experience and I think probably testament to kind of like sport at York spirit that everyone kind of embraced that and it was a really sort of nice opportunity for clubs and college teams to be a part of a collective not just they're representing just their one sport but we were sort of team york in its most united sense which was brilliant i think that's why it sort of stands out in my mind um i mean other other highlights it's hard to sort of pinpoint any moments but um i really enjoyed a lot of the sort of and perhaps unexpectedly so because i think i came into the sports press thinking it would only ever be sport but actually you sort of your horizons open when you realize that you're also there as a sort of a represented a representative for students as a whole and actually felt through the activities that some of, I did with some of the other officers like the Love York Awards was a really nice sort of culmination of a year's worth of work at the end of the year which recognized the work of the people that you've been working with the whole time a lot of the time on these initiatives sometimes you can kind of you end up taking credit for something that isn't actually yours to take credit for and that you know you're the sort of public face of something right as because yeah. you're the sports president yeah. but it will be the the work of you know a club president or um someone behind the scenes or, or even in yusu itself um and the sort of co or the collective sort of volunteering of time of you know anyone to be honest in any doesn't even have to be a member of a sports club like there will often be just sort of students that I would come across who are working on absolutely amazing initiatives and the the Love York Awards at the end of the year was a brilliant opportunity to on some of those and I think you know recognize some of the unsung heroes that you know we might not necessarily have the time or space to to recognize so that was another highlight I suppose I think if we're speaking manifesto terms, the thing that I always hold on to was uh, termly gym memberships. I had so many sort of debate about that. Um, and I think it was, is that what we were talking about earlier around, you know, bringing people with you and also encouraging sort of senior people to see things through the eyes of students. And I think sometimes that can get lost. So it's the SAB's job to sort of speak truth to power in that sense and say this is how it this is what it means to students this is you know how it will affect their day-to-day -day lives and therefore this is what i need you to do because of that and sometimes that check and challenge is the most important thing that you can do at any one time so in the case of sort of term gym memberships i was saying you know anything that operates on a month-to-month -month basis where students are in york for 10 weeks that means that they're out of pocket for at least two of those weeks because you know they're not here <laughs> for that point in time so and you know i actually remember sort of one of those conversations where they were like oh yeah like they're not they operate in that sort of 10 week or students and we operate in the sort of 10 week term time block but york sport is an organization that operates sort of regardless of term time right so it was just those sort of differences of perspective um and sort of being able to vocalize the student experience and how it mm -hmm. affects students is that representation thing is really interesting isn't it and like as you mm. said about the students that are un unsung heroes and things that people are pressing for and representing the student voice it's so important as you said sometimes to literally just say the most simple things about yeah. how students <laughs> operate to people that haven't maybe been students for a while or maybe weren't students and then yeah. the cogs start to turn and you manage to make progress and we still have those conversations around termly gym memberships now funnily enough <laughs> but but there's a lot of progress and we're seeing now like every year in january you get those two termly options which is fantastic that that's like a thing that happens now because of work yeah. that you started in in 2017 yeah um 
what would you say your biggest sort of takeaways from the role was like what sort of skills and and, and things were you able to develop in, in the role that's helped you in your career now um I mean I can think of a couple of examples sort of tangibly but it's worth saying at the outset I didn't realize it at the time but I'm immensely grateful for it now like my sub sab year honed so many different skills that I think I thought I had before that maybe somewhat ambitiously um but you're you're almost like a sponge going into you so you sort of assimilate so much and you meet so many people who are leaders in their fields or just sort of really excel in their areas or are inspiring for so many different reasons I think that quite a lot of that rubs off on you and actually you can kind of there were definitely people that I met through the year where I was like, that is an amazing quality to have, or I wish I could be like that when I'm older, that kind of, you'd, so just the experience and the training and the people that I met were quite formative now in terms of looking back on sort of what I do now. And I think, where did I get that from? Or who am I trying to emulate when I'm trying to, you know, give a big presentation or, or so on and so forth. Quite a lot of it comes back to experiences that I had in my sab year. So um, the learning curve is huge and immensely, immensely beneficial for sort of all of the things that I've done in certainly my career. But I think I'm sure you'll feel the same, Maddie, that that sort of kind of the opening of doors and the things that you learn is going to be hugely beneficial. So sort of whatever you choose to do after Sabia, and that's many and varied <laughs> based on our own Sab teams experience. We've all gone off and done loads of different things and um, tangible things, though. Um, Speaking truth to power, I know we spoke about it earlier, but certainly in sort of a lot of organizations, um, being able to sort of clearly and artic clearly and concisely, she says ironically messing up that sentence, clearly and concisely <laughs> articulate your point to people who are more senior than you and whose decisions that you're trying to sway and influence um, is a, a really, sort of like it's a skill that a lot of people underestimate um but it's something that can be really honed and I think the work that we did in in sab year around sort of speaking to really senior people both within USU in York Sport and conversations that you have with the senior management team at university so in Heslington Hall you know not many people get to say that they've sort of had the opportunities to influence university policy and speak with the vice chancellor and actually change his mind on things um some of those sorts of things are you know really tangible sort of almost interview worthy examples that I know sort of me and my sab team have used in different points in time um and I think um sort of the ability to present and talk to people so both sort of you know on the sort of you will address a lot of big audiences as a sabbatical officer, even if it's sort of virtually or, or in person, but sort of the ability to kind of engage people and um, have really constructive conversations with people and to understand where people disagree with you and actually not have, it's a sort of constructive argument in the sense that it's not an argument anymore. It's just as differences of opinion and being able to talk about why you see things differently and not let it escalate to sort of a conflict, but actually that sort of conflict resolution piece is integral to being an officer because you spend so much of your time reconciling different opinions or trying to explain why people see things differently um, to different people. You spend a lot of time putting yourselves in the shoes of others and that is hugely beneficial in terms of having sort of empathy and building relationships either with you know important stakeholders or within your team at work all of those sorts of things are, are really crucial sort of for any career I would say so that's a sort of a whistle stop tour if you like with a few examples <laughs> uh, what do you think though Maddie like I'd be interested to know obviously particularly where like a lot of your sabia this year has been virtual would you say you're still kind of taking the same things from the experience yeah i think it's interesting so this year couldn't be further from my previous sab year 
uh, in the fact, yeah, that purely everything is online now, but also we have seen sport have such a massive impact on it. And I think I'm definitely now doing a lot more work that I maybe wouldn't have imagined myself tackling. But I think communication skills is, is definitely something that I've learned more stuff about this year than last year, because I think whereas before you could rely on going to meetings and talking to people, now it's a lot more like written communication skills and you have to learn different yeah. ways to, to engage with not just students, but as you said, like the, the decision makers in the university. And I think a takeaway definitely is like learning how to speak to people, learning how to adjust uh, your tone and, and how you approach things and not to go in sort of headstrong you've got to work and build a <laughs> relationship and yeah. you know that's with the university but that's also with student groups like people have got to trust you um I think this year has definitely taught me a lot of about my ability to think on my feet as well we've had to be very adaptable this year there's guide guidance changes sort of we can make a decision one day and the next day it's changed and I think we've had to be so on top of our communication this year because if it fails students feel like we're not representing them we're not talking to them and we're not bringing them with mm. us and I think that's become like such a big thing to me and, and definitely something that I've improved on massively since when I started started yeah. in the role yeah that crisis management is probably should have been probably one of the first things that I said actually when you asked you know <laughs> what did you learn but that I mean and that's, that was in my year where we didn't have, you know, a global pandemic. But I think it's it's always true to say that you know what your priorities are as an officer, but you might not know what your day-to-day -day is going to look like. You know, you'll go in with the day thinking that you have a plan and within about five minutes no. that plan will have disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think thinking on your feet and that ability to really quickly problem solve and then communicate it and say okay no worries scrap plan a we're on plan b or plan c or plan z by the end of the day um is immensely immensely helpful because you know in life as in the workplace things don't always go according to plan but if you can be the person who can think of a solution really quickly because you're used to that sort of experience of coming up with alternative plan after alternative plan that is an immensely useful skill to have agreed so I'm just thinking, what advice would you have for anyone currently thinking about running for sports president in this year's elections? I mean, I know uh, I'm probably saying this to an audience that is slightly skeptical given that we're in the midst of a global pandemic and it probably feels like the most bizarre time to be running for an officer. Um, I would say for all of those above reasons, now is exactly the time to be running for an officer. There are a huge amount of issues that the pandemic has thrown up, um, a lot of which will be affecting young people and students, disproportionately so probably. And actually being an officer at UCU gives you a really unique opportunity and a platform to articulate those problems and help solve them. Um, so I would say sort of now more than ever, if you're thinking about it, definitely, definitely, definitely run. I think sometimes the sort of the hardest obstacle is thinking that you are worthy of it and therefore being willing to put yourself forward. And that felt like quite a risk I remember taking at the time and actually sort of putting yourselves out there and saying, this is what I think, this is what I believe, these are the values that I wanna run a campaign on, is hard because you're exposing yourself. Um, but actually for me, and I'm sure Maddie, you feel the same way, that exposure lends itself so well and opens up so many opportunities for you to influence and change things for the better that actually it's a risk worth taking. And as soon as you sort of clear yourself of that mental hurdle almost, the rest follows really naturally. Um, so I would say don't let that exposure put you off for the experience of being able to sort of change and affect for the better the lives of a huge amount of students yeah I think it's all about that if you care for me if you care yeah. then you should run don't worry yeah. about it don't worry about not being a confident public speaker don't worry about these things you know that can be learned but if you care then you should yeah. absolutely go for the role because you're perfect yeah for it. yeah and it's the difference between you know 
I'm a, it's probably a bad sporting analogy, but you know, do you want to be on the sidelines of the game watching it play out, or do you want to be on the pitch trying to make it happen, like trying to you know push forward? And I always think if you can think of solutions and if you've got ideas as to how to help, particularly at the moment, then run. Like you have the vision and you ha- like you can make those sort of solutions possible and being an officer gives you that sort of platform to to implement what you think should change um yeah like like it's the vision piece and also it's sort of it's what you believe to be the case so I don't know if you can feel that strongly about sort of how you see things panning out at sport at York but also with issues affecting students more widely now is the time (laughs) more than ever I would say as ironic as it sounds um yeah I I mean if you have the belief you should do it there you have it if you you believe if you have the vision run for sport president from two sport presidents (laughs) do it do it (laughs) right thank you very much Laura um it's been really useful and I hope that people find this resource as useful as I have today (laughs) brilliant no thanks for having me Maddie it's been an absolute pleasure